What's up guys, my name's Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. This week did not go as planned and I say that in a good way because we got multiple new software releases including iOS 16.2 beta 4 for beta testers and iOS 16.1.2 for everybody else. So in this episode, we're gonna discuss iOS 16.1.2 and clarify a few things about that release along with sharing some additional changes in iOS 16.2 beta 4. And then after covering the software side of things, Things, we're going to discuss more rumors surrounding the iPhone 15 and Apple's mixed reality headset, the Elon Musk versus Apple and Coinbase versus Apple feuds, why not to buy $90,000 worth of Apple products at 2 a.m. and more. And as always, if you guys want to stay updated with all things Apple, make sure to click that subscribe button down below so you don't miss next week's episode. All right, so let's start with iOS 16.1.2. And this update, of course, fixed these two things right here. So crash detection, optimization, optimizations for iPhone 14 and 14 Pro and improved compatibility with wireless carriers. So those are the two things that were mentioned in the release notes. Now, the thing I wanted to talk about first is related to the crash detection optimizations because it seems that roller coasters were not the only activity that was falsely triggering the new crash detection feature. It also happened to users while skiing. Yes, seriously. So according to Utah news site KSL, dispatchers in the area have noticed an increase in accidental emergency calls from skiers. So they say, quote, the technology is designed to detect severe car crashes, but it's often accidentally activated at ski resorts. With many of the activations, people don't respond at first because they are unaware that the call was even placed. They're usually like, oh, I'm sorry, I was skiing, everything's fine. So I would assume that this was another big reason that Apple pushed out 16.1.2 pretty much immediately after they found a fix. So, you know, if you ski, please let me know if this has been fixed. I'm in Florida, so I cannot test this myself. And then as for the other bullet point there, the improved compatibility with wireless carriers, we still do not know exactly what that means because Apple did not clarify this whatsoever. But I will say on my main device, my 14 Pro, my connectivity, my 5G has actually gotten worse since updating to 16.1.2. So compatibility in this case does not equate to performance. But if you've had a different experience here on 16.1.2, please let me know in the comments. And then as far as the security patches for this update, we still don't know the specifics of that. We don't know which bugs were squashed, if they were actively exploited or any of that, but we should know relatively soon. So yeah, not too much going on with iOS iOS 16.1.2, really just minor bug fixes for that update. Now, moving on to iOS 16.2, our latest beta is beta 4 that came out earlier this week. And there's really only one change I noticed that I did not mention in my What's New video, and that has to do with older notifications in the notification center. So as you can see, when I pull down my notification center or on the lock screen, it's going to show my older notifications by default. They're not hidden anymore. So this is pretty annoying. I mean, I really hope that this is not the case because you can see there when I clear them and I go back, they appear again. And that is not the normal behavior. So I have the previous beta here. This is beta three on the left right here of the phone I'm on right now. You can see same situation here. Now, if I clear those and I go back into the notification center, they stay hidden. You guys probably already know that's how it works, but there is a change in how that works here with beta four and those older notifications always show up in the notification center. So I hope that's a bug. You know, I hope they don't continue to do that. I hope that's not the new way for notifications, but that is new here in beta four. And then something else I'm proud to say has been fixed is live activities in the TV application. We no longer have that extreme lag anymore. So live activities were, you know, borderline broken in the TV application because it was like five minutes behind the actual score on multiple occasions, mainly when I'm watching NBA games on live activities, you know, right up there in the dynamic island. So that has been fixed here in beta four. And then we still somehow do not have Uber or Uber Eats compatibility for live activities. I just ordered another meal earlier today just to test live activities and it's still not working. We still don't have live activity support, even though we have the toggle here in our settings. It makes absolutely no sense that these apps are not supported since Uber was one of the main applications that Apple pushed for this feature when they first unveiled it at the Worldwide Developers Conference. So emergency SOS via satellite, which is the new feature that just launched last month for iPhone 14 devices has just been credited with its first life saved. That's right. A man that was stranded in Alaska with no signal was able to contact emergency services via satellite 
from his iPhone 14. So thankfully he was, you know, updated and everything. He was able to contact authorities and it looks like Apple's emergency response center was working with search and rescue teams to send out volunteer searchers to the GPS coordinates that were relayed to Apple using this emergency SOS via satellite function. That is just amazing. So if you have an iPhone 14 series, go into your settings for emergency SOS and try out the demo for this feature. You don't ever want to have to use it, but you should at least know how to use it if you need to. Oh, and I did also want to mention that we did have two security response updates on iOS 16.2 beta 3. So we had an A and a B version of 16.2 beta 3, and those were just rapid security response updates, which you can see we have the toggle right here to allow automatically install those. If you have that checked off, you may not have even seen this populate in your software update section. It probably just installed when you were not paying attention or while you were asleep. So, you know, 16.2 does introduce this feature. We did hear about this for a while, but it seems like it's actually going to start working after 16.2 rolls out to the public. Now, even though we have a fix for the live activities bug, we still have a few bugs going on here with 16.2 beta 4 and iOS 16.1.2. So the first thing is, of course, the infamous switching off a focus mode leads to a black wallpaper on the lock screen and the home screen. I'm still having that on 16.2 beta 4 and 16.1.2. It literally happens on a daily basis and it's very frustrating. We still have the lag here with the control center. You can see the lag right there for my home kit devices. We still have the bug in Safari. If you go into the control center and out of it and then tap right here in Safari, you can see that the keyboard completely disappears. We don't have a keyboard right there. So that is still a bug that was there in beta three. It is still here in beta four. Let's try that one more time. Sometimes it pops up. Sometimes there you go. So it popped up that time. The first time it was just completely gone. And then I also have the black screen bug in YouTube. I can you know hear the video, but I don't actually see it. I have to close and reopen that video in YouTube for that to be fixed. Although the crashing, thankfully the YouTube app crashing was fixed by you know Google and YouTube themselves without an update needed. But this black screen bug has been going on for a while now, so that makes me think it's not an issue with YouTube, but it's an issue with iOS. All right, so now let's talk about what to expect next. And we're getting very close to the final release of iOS 16.2, and I would expect that in a couple of weeks. But first, I do expect to see either a beta 5 and RC or a beta 5 and an RC. So next week, there's a couple of scenarios that could go down. So first off, we could get a beta 5 early in the week and then an RC later later in the week, or we could just go straight to an RC next week. And then the final will most likely be released on the week of the 12th, if not right there on the 12th itself. And then if you're on the beta program and you're wondering when the iOS 16.3 betas are going to start, those will most likely start in early January, either the first or most likely the second week of January. All right, so now let's move on to the fun stuff. Let's talk about the latest Apple news. And let's start with the latest iPhone 15 rumor. And this is a big one because it's related to the cameras. So according to a new report from Nikki Asia, the iPhone 15 will be equipped with Sony's newest state of the art image sensors, which will greatly improve low light performance. This new image sensor is going to double the saturation signal level in each pixel, allowing it to capture more light to cut down on the underexposure and overexposure. And they also say that it's going to be able to better photograph a person's face, even with strong backlighting. So like if you have your back to the sun and the sun is really bright in the background, it's still going to be able to photograph a face much better than what we have on the 14. And all of this was done using a new semiconductor architecture. So this sounds promising and we still don't know yet if it's going to be in the regular 15 and the 15 pro or just in the 15 pro models that is yet to be a Announced. Now, moving on to Apple's mixed reality headset, this thing has been all of the rage for the past year or so, and it seems that we're finally getting close to a launch. And now we have a major name change for the software that it's going to be running. So all along, we heard that Apple was going to be naming the software Reality OS or ROS for short. But now, according to Bloomberg, it's going to be XR. OS. According to the report, the new software name is a nod to the headset's mixed reality capabilities. XR stands for extended reality, a term that encompasses both augmented and virtual reality. So I guess reality OS would kind of limit Apple to just being 
reality based, like augmented reality based instead of also being virtual reality based. So XR makes more sense. Now this report also details that there was a secret shell corporation named Deep Dive LLC that filed to trademark the brand XROS in several countries and is now trying to secure that name in the US. And that's usually how Apple moves. They usually make these shell companies just so that can't be led back to Apple directly. We find out later down the road though that that is how they do things when they are about to announce a new product. So expect to continue hearing more about this headset in the not so distant future. I mean, it's pretty much coming up. We heard that there could be an event to announce this headset as early as January. Now let's talk about a name that you simply could not escape this past week, even if you tried. Elon Musk. So early this week, Elon Musk tweeted out, Apple has mostly stopped advertising on Twitter. Do they hate free speech in America? Then he posted a poll asking if Apple should publish all censorship actions it has taken to affect its customers and that Apple was threatening Twitter's presence in the App Store. So if you add this with the fact that Phil Schiller, which is Apple's App Store chief, deactivated his Twitter account after Musk took over Twitter, and you see that there is definitely some drama going on behind the scenes. However, just a couple of days later, like literally like two days later, Elon met up with Tim Cook at Apple Park in Cupertino, presumably to discuss the issue at hand. And he thanked Tim for showing him around the HQ and then followed up by saying, good conversation. Among other things, we resolved the misunderstanding about Twitter potentially being removed from the App Store. Tim was clear that Apple never considered doing so. So all of this undoubtedly stems from Apple taking that infamous 30% cut from all App Store transactions as he tweeted out about the secret, which is not so secret by the way, 30% tax on everything bought through the App Store prior to the meeting and discussing everything with Tim Cook. However, one company that has not yet resolved their issue with Apple in this secret 30% tax is Coinbase. And that's because Apple is requesting them to remove the feature where you can send NFTs to another user due to an in-app purchase dispute. Here's what Coinbase said on Twitter. Apple's claim is that the gas fees required to send NFTs need to be paid through their in-app purchase system so that they can collect 30% of the gas fee. For anyone who understands how NFTs and blockchains work, this is clearly not possible. Apple's proprietary in-app purchase system does not support crypto, so we couldn't comply even if we tried. And as much as I support Apple for taking that 30% of in-app purchases, this one does not make any sense to me at all because Coinbase is right. There's no way for gas fees to fall under this rule. I mean, crypto prices change by the minute, gas fees change by the second. And if that's getting converted to USD right away, one party is going to lose a significant amount of money on that conversion. And keep in mind, this is only for the transfer of NFTs, not buying or selling them, just the transfer. So I see really one of two ways this is going to pan out. Either A, Apple needs to start holding crypto in order for this to work and collect that money via Ethereum, or B, just drop it and let Coinbase continue on with what they've been doing for a while. This is a rare instance where I really do not think that Apple should be collecting 30% on gas fees. It just doesn't make any sense. Now moving on to the upcoming M2 Max chip, we just recently saw some leaked Geekbench scores appear on the Geekbench browser, and they are honestly kind of disappointing. So these scores are for a Mac configuration with the M2 Max chip, a 12 core CPU, and 96 gigs of RAM. And the Mac listed has an identifier of Mac 14,6, which could be an upcoming MacBook Pro or the next gen Mac Studio. And if you take a look at these scores here, we got an 1853 on the single core and a 13855 on the multi core. And for comparison, the M1 Max chip on the Mac Studio scored 1755 on the single core and 12,333 on the multi-core. So if this is any indication, especially if this is the Mac Studio, the performance increase for the M2 Max is going to be pretty minor. And then finally, let's play a hypothetical game. So if you're planning to go to the Apple Store to buy $90,000 worth of iPhones, what time of day would you go? If you're asking me, I would probably go early in the morning, maybe early afternoon at the latest. Well, a New York City man decided to do just this at nearly 2 a.m. According to 1010 Winds Radio in New York, a 27-year-old was targeted and robbed just moments after he left Apple's 24-hour New York flagship store around 1.45 a.m. 
It says the victim was a small business owner who regularly makes large purchases from Apple, and this time it was 300 iPhone 13s, and they were all placed in three large Apple bags. Oh, and he also got punched in the face because he was trying to put up a fight. So I guess the main lesson here, really two lessons, are A, never make a large purchase at a brick and mortar store at 2 a.m., no matter what city you're in, and also B, Pay attention to your surroundings. I'm willing to bet that these robbers had been watching him for months before attempting this robbery. So there you have it. That is the latest batch of Apple news from this past week, along with some updates on the latest iOS 16.1.2 and 16.2 beta 4. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And I do also really appreciate everybody's opinions on last week's episode when I asked about starting a podcast. If you guys would like me to start a podcast, I got a lot of really good answers, a lot of yeses, a few no's. I really respect everybody's opinion. And you know, I really listen to everything you guys say because I really want to be as good as possible. I want to deliver the best content as possible to you guys. So I appreciate all of that input. If you have any more input, you could also leave it down as a comment down below, or you could always message me over on Twitter or on Instagram. I'm always taking a look at my messages on both of those platforms. So yeah, again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss next week's episode. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.